Uh, kia ora tātou, tēnei, uh, tūtahi tēnei, te mihi atu, te mihi aroha ki a, ki a tātou i hui hui mai nei, uh, no mai anō, no mai hoki mai, uh, no mai hara mai ki te, uh, te moana o tauranga, uh, um, uh, kei te uh, noho au i te mautere o matakana, uh, i tērā taha, uh, i, te, uh, i te moana o um, tauranga o awanui, uh, te whakaruru hau o tauranga moana uh, Nō reira uh, Ko ngā hapu o uh, te ngare O uh, tau eti e mihi atu uh, Nei, uh, ki a koutou uh, I tēnei uh, rā tino o tāhua uh, Nō reira tēnā koutou uh, Tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa Kia ora everyone, hey look I don't, I don't know if you can see well um, uh, Not the best uh, graphic person it looked fine on the laptop but uh if you can see that's cool if not please feel free to um, move forward i uh, really hoping we can kind of like have a bit of a cordial this morning at breakfast time this morning uh we're just kind of a few of us sitting around the table uh involved in different research topics just kind of tossing ideas and that was actually pretty cool so um hoping we can do something similar today that if you've got questions partai uh, and even feedback, actually really, really appreciate any thoughts, feedback on uh, what, we, what we're doing, what we've done, what we're trying to do and what we're yet to do in terms of this, uh, this project, this uh, rangahau uh, research project uh, called Kia Tika Te He Ika uh, and it's all about, um, for us, as, iwi, uh, as the Iwi Collective Partnership of 19 Iwi uh, and most of the tribes here in, uh, in Te Wairiki, mai ngā kuri awhare ki Tihirau, most of the iwi in this area right into the central North Island into uh, Tuwhare Toa are part of this uh, collective. So uh, pretty cool to be here today and to have a uh, kōrero with you all uh, about what we've been up to uh, with, this, with this research project. Uh, but firstly, can I just introduce so, uh, Maru Samuels, uh, been involved in um, Māori fisheries, iwi fisheries for or almost 20 years now. Uh, the Māori Fisheries Act, which um, sort of came in back in 2004 and officially uh, kind of finished off the whole treaty fishery settlement claim and handed the, the assets back to the tribes, I came in in 2005. Uh, so I've been involved for, for that long. Uh, and also just want to introduce uh, Irene uh, Irene over here, kia ora Irene. Uh, Irene's been our main uh, researcher um, that's helped, helped us through this project. As Julie said, I, I'm not a researcher. Uh, and for the Iwi Collective, I, I wasn't. Um, I've now learnt how hard it is, <laughs> especially writing a report. Um, we're almost finished, Julie. <clears throat> I'm going to read some parts of our report uh, today. Um, but... Um, yeah, you know, and there's some massive, awesome learnings in that, just being a part of a research project. And for the first time for our collective, our collective is uh, 14 years old this year. And it's the first time we've ever done research. But it's actually changed the way we now think about research. I think every business, every organisation talks about, you know, the importance of research and R&D um, uh, and, and just being able to uh, secure this research kaupapa uh, with the support of Sustainable Seas uh, and with, a, you know, with the um, big challenge and the awesome, well, I believe it's a really awesome kaupapa that we've, that we've chosen to pursue. Uh, it's actually changed the way we think uh, as, as a tribe, uh, as a collective, as the board. Um, and uh, for me, as the former CEO of the, of the partnership, um, where research now is just a part of how we operate. And uh, part of today, we'll talk about the next steps um, so making, making tikanga explicit in the ICP, what, what the heck does that mean? Uh, so a uh, couple, of, couple of things there. Um, firstly, you know, there's an acknowledgement that um, tikanga uh, within a, a commercial business context, tikanga is really about the people that are sitting around your decision-making table or the people that are feeding into your decisions. Eh? So if they come... Um, with the real, if they come with that knowledge, with that upbringing, um, then you're going to get that in your decision-making processes. Uh, and, and that's kind of, I think that's, 
done well where, your, where all of your people speak the real and all of your people have grown up back home. Um, so the, the, there's um, that component. And so not to say that it's never been done, um, but that, that's the way it's been done, I guess, to date. And that works well if you've got the right people sitting around the table. If you don't have, and if you look across our, um, say, with our 19 tribes that are part of our, uh, of the ICP and the uh, um, representatives that sit at those tables, probably, uh, I guess, of maybe a third to half um, don't speak the real. The, where the real is not the native. And when we think about tikanga and all of those traditions and learnings that really gets transferred through the real, um, you know, that's, that's interesting. And so, second part of making it explicit, uh, sorry, first part, part of the first part is, um, so how do we, ha is there a way, can we actually systemize this? Can we actually set up a framework, a, a process where it doesn't matter, um, great if you've got the real, if you don't have the real, then uh, you can still, uh, we can still ensure as an organization that tikanga has been built into our decisions and how we manage our assets and how we manage um, our fisheries. Uh, the second part in terms of making it explicit is uh, we believe that um, you know you should be able to see you should be able to see um, whew, you should be able to see uh, our tikanga in practice that we should be able, you know that, that that application to fisheries management decisions uh, should be tangible. Um, I, th I think, you know, well, my, certainly my experience before we took on this project, uh, I think we're really good at talking about our, our values, we're really good at talking about um, kaitiakitanga, we're really good at talking about manakitanga, all of these things that are, that are important, absolutely critical. But th that, in my experience, is how far a lot of that conversation goes is just great kōrero, but... Um, this is really about, or well, how do we bring about action? How do we bring about change? And in that sense, I guess it kind of falls a bit under this organisational change theory. Um, but this project is really the research, the first part of that entire uh, big process that goes from, okay, researching, okay, actually, what is our tikanga uh, as Māori when it, when it comes to fisheries? Uh, so quickly, just uh, and uh, forgive me for those who have heard, heard this presentation before, um, but um, you know, just some some of the I, I think some of the unique things about the way we've done uh, our project. Um, uh, yeah, res research um, rationale. You know, why why did we take on this project? Uh, and there's a number of um, different reasons. Um, and so I'll have, have a chat about that, uh, some of the unique things around our methodology. Um, have a bit of a read, as I said, a, a piece of our, uh, one of our drafts uh, that's just come hot off the press this morning. Uh, and then have a chat about next steps from here. Time. Uh, the beautiful Matakana Island, uh, Pane Pane, uh, where we would catch the uh, ferry across the Tauranga boys and Tauranga girls every day uh, and back home again. Uh, in the afternoon. Uh, and Mowal's Mowal's over here. So if you've ever climbed up Mowal, uh, you'll look down on um, the beautiful uh, Te Mautere o Matakana. Research rationale. So at the time we, and still is today, you know, massive public uh, and government pressure on, on the fishing industry. Uh, for right or wrong, massive pressure. And there were changes, some of it, I think, justified, some of it not. So th this is the context. Um, I so say at a time when ICP, this is our first research project, uh, and, and um, talk about innovation, but um, this this is our commitment behind it. Um, you know, a, a hunch, a belief that hey, there must be some value in our tikanga, that not not just in identity and who we are and doing the right thing, but there must be a, you know a hunch that there's some business, there's some commercial value in that if done in the right way. Um, and identity, this is, man, this is just us being us. Uh, you know, for a while there, I think we kind of, uh, you know, being in the New Zealand commercial fishing industry and global fishing industry is, is damn hard. Seafood, and doing it right is really hard. 
So I think rightfully for those first decade, most of the tribes just focused on bloody keeping the boats afloat and uh, you know, keeping the doors open. Um, but now, now we've got to a point where, hey, we have, we have a decade of learnings now. Um, how do we now reconcile, bring back together our identity as Māori, those things that make us unique and those things that uh, drive our value system and how do we actually uh, bring that back into the commercial business? Because that's who we are and that's the way we roll. Um, and so, you know, we've had a number of wānang over the last couple of years. I think originally the project was supposed to take uh, 18 months, maybe. Is that right, Owen? About 18 months. Uh, I think we were into year three, I think, um, and almost finished, almost finished, Julie. Um, but you'll be, um, you guys will all, all uh, love uh, the report once it's, once it's out. Um, interviewees, we did something quite unique. We interviewed people uh, that are matatau, um, you know, that, that understand tikanga, have grown up in, it, in, that, in that world. And uh, we did um, six interviews, seven, six interviews, seven interviews, and 99% of those were, were fully iro, iro te reo. Um, Iruera Lee Morgan uh, did our interviews, ran our interviews, um, and has, um, is doing that part of the, of the written report. Um, but all of those people had a connection to the ICP. And all of those people had an understanding, not just of tikanga, but of commercial fisheries and how that operates. Uh, you know, one of my observations is it's quite rare to find people that actually understand all of those mechanics. Um, can come across a lot of people of our whanau, whoever, talking about fisheries issues and their view on stuff based on tikanga, but their view of, or the reality of what actually happens when you're out deep sea fishing is actually not right is incorrect so you know it's important to, I think and it was important to us within this project that we had people and, and those people are hard to find but that's the way we uh, we did it uh, we had wānanga so we uh, worked with our 19 uh, representatives from the 19 different tribes and we got together a few times over the last uh, few years that one was here in Tauranga Moana down at the um, so Trinity Wharf um, I think we lost all the photos of the actual wānanga. That's, I think that's the after social event. Um, we had to make them small to cut out all the alcohol around the outsides. Um, and then we interviewed some of the ICP uh, board members and uh, CEO and those sorts of ones. Um, and, and the idea here is that we want to build uh, yeah, what we're calling a tikanga assessment framework. Uh, yeah, yeah. Enough said about that. <clears throat> uh, so th these are just some of our a snippet of some of our uh, early findings, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Irene to to give me a bit of a hand with this. But uh, you know what's really interesting for me is that uh, I'm I'm on the um, Tiohu Kaim on a board, and Tiohu's running a similar process uh, with the 58 tribes that are uh, involved in the, in the national uh, fishing uh, structure. And, um, and that, that process has been run by or facilitated through uh, Te Ori Paki. And uh, there was a wānang up in Auckland only about a month ago. And so two, two different processes, two different methodologies, um, but uh, and, and maybe a little bit of a difference in the terminology, but those two processes, pretty much in my my view on it, they come back around and end up at the same point. Uh, you know, which shouldn't be a surprise, uh, but that's just really cool when you see that um, happening. Two independent processes, but you know, our 19 iwi are part of that 58, that other other process. Um, and we're talking about tikanga Māori, we're talking about tikanga, uh, the, the, the same thing. So um, just a little, little, little bit of a difference in the way these things are, are, are phrased or coined or, um, and even the way that we've um, shaped it within the, the report itself. Uh, and, and that's just about shaping stuff to a way that our 19 tribes and our representatives can, um, I think, easily digest, given those differences in, in uh, real. 
Um, and given that it's, it's going to be those people that are going to have to apply this stuff in practice, right? So you've got to understand this uh, enough to be able to apply it to everyday decisions around um, how do we deal with the uh, challenge of bottom trawling, you know, which everybody has a view on. Um, actually, if you think bottom trawling is wrong, put your hand up if you're bold enough. If, if you're just based on what you've heard, what you know, if you think it's wrong and should stop, bottom trawling, see it, yeah, yeah, one, two, three, four. The way it's done currently, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got a half a hand over here, <laughs> half a hand, yeah. Um, and if you're bold enough to say, no, I think, I, I, I know, I understand how it works, and I'm okay with it. If you're bold enough to put your hand up, put your hand up, please. Yeah, a couple of us, a couple of us, yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's, right, that's the reality. That's exactly what's happening out there. On all, all of these different topics, whether it's bottom uh, contact, uh, whether it's discards, whether it's cameras on boats, um, whether it's, you know, um, Matua, Jack, Thatcher, talking about persaining, you know, whether it's persaining, all of these different issues uh, that are national issues uh, are also issues internally, um, you know, the iwi view on it, the hapu view on it. This hapu's view on it, that hapu's view on it, this individual is that. And so all we're trying to do is come up with a framework, a way that we can work through these things. Because uh, again, in the, my experience over the last 20 years is, um, sure, if you've got enough money, you can buy a scientist to say whatever you want them to say. Or you can find a scientist that aligns with your view. And so, I was just going to say, yeah. I think yeah. that's, um, that's common um, in any institution or organisation uh, versus the, the community. Is that the communities are, are never that privy to the information held within the institutions. Yeah. So, you know, uh, yeah, so to, uh, well, not today, but it'd be interesting to know what you know that we don't know for you to, to draw yourself to that conclusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Know, no, no, abs absolutely, absolutely. And um, uh, yeah, and again, that's been kind of reinforced through our research project, um, even, even as I say, with our the people we've interviewed and their different levels of knowledge on different things. Um, and, and then, yeah, and you, you get the whole um, spectrum, eh? And sort of, hey, it doesn't really matter what happens, I don't really care, it's wrong, you know? Uh, um, but but, um, and so where we have to get to as the ICP is uh, we, the collective, uh, looks after these assets on behalf of the 19 tribes. And so we have to get to a point where unless we're saying, oh, let's shut the doors on the business. <coughs> and, um, you know, how do, we, how, do we make, how do we continue to thrive? And actually not just thrive, how do we um, actually do better than maybe the current trajectory that we are? Yeah. You've got all that many iwi around the table, and I'm thinking, wow, well, yeah. I'm in awe that you, that you have got, but you're obviously progressing in space. But how do you, is there a, uh, is there a common thread within all of those iwi to enable you to uh, proceed collaboratively? Because I would have thought that would be quite a, a hard space to manage given all the different iwi. Um, given though, you know, there's probably some com commonalities around values and that's what mm. we talk about, but yet, yeah, so, you know, that, that's common. Yeah. But are there, are there any um, examples where it is a struggle in the collaborative, collective process that you've got to follow yeah. with all those iwi and the rest? Yeah, yeah, hu huge. Um, yeah, there's, there's um, <clears throat> you know, there, there've been issues that have almost broken the collective in half, um, and even within our research project, as I say, there are different views 
right across, right? There, there are some views that come out that, um, you know, we, we have a, we have a, one of our approaches as the collective is um, we work with Māori seafood businesses um, to which we have a connection, either through a shareholding as one of the tribes or yeah, effectively we work with our own. That's, that's one of our policies. Um, and one of the views that's strongly put in our research is, no, we should be actually doing more to build our own people, support our own fishers in our own backyard, not, not the national kind of, even, even albeit they are Māori seafood businesses, you know, so a real, real um, uh, cry to get more support in 10 minutes. More support in our own backyard get our own things up and running. Uh, but what, one of the things that does, that drove us together and does help, uh, you know, part of the um, adhesive is, um, you know, the, the quota, the way the quota system works and the shares that you'll get as iwi through the settlement is quite small and it's really hard to, to make it on your own and you, you will survive and you will do far better and you will stay off the front page of the Herald does Herald still exist today? It does, yeah. yeah. Online, on, on front page of the online Herald. Um, if you, you do better if you, if you work together collaboratively with other EU and you share, you know, you share expertise, you share resources, um, you go into investment opportunities together and, and that's worked well. Started off as 12 iwi and grew to 19, hopefully um, maybe 2021 in the next uh, year or two. Yeah. Um, but look, the, these are some of the, just some of the, quickly, some of the themes. Um, when am I going to ha hand it over to you, Irene? <laughs> um, I, I might, yeah. if you want to have a chat about this stuff, just, just as Irene comes up, um, I want to tell you about this impacts of colonisation. Oh, oh, you know, when they come up, eh, we were having our widening our researchers together over a little to do a few months ago. And this one came up, and I was like, oh, you know, bloody, you know, do we always have to go on about colonisation? And um, I, I think we kind of got into a mentality of the last um, we while we were just like, oh, we just got to get on and do it. Colonisation is colonisation. Yeah, we've all been colonising. But, you know, your mindset, because it's so challenging out there. Um, but then our researchers were like, no, 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 you actually got to go back and acknowledge, like, when you look at the massive impact and your loss of, or your um, loss of mātauranga today and your loss of knowledge of tikanga and all those sorts of things, uh, you know, you can't, you can't sidestep the impacts and effects of colonisation and what it's had on our people over the last 150 years. And not just that, but, you know, the removal of our people from in the fishing industry, beginning back with the um, oyster fisheries Act back in 1866, I think it was. So, you know, Maru, you just need to, uh, you know, chill out and um, actually. So, so there's a piece in there that acknowledges those impacts um, that have helped put us into the challenging position that we have today uh, to deal with these things. <coughs> Shall I carry on, Irene, or did you want to have a quick chat? I'm, I'm gonna. I said Irene's been our main. Uh, research lead and, and you know Maru you know that's not how you do research and no you've got to think about these things and um, we're grateful to have had or have had to have Irene as part of the team you can hold it like you switch it Kia ora, <coughs> Kia ora koutou um, just quickly Irene Kiri Ama Royal tōku ingoa um, he would be a hau no nga puhi uh, nui tonu, he te tai toke rau, uh, tai mai ki pare hauraki, um, hoki mai ki wainga te motu anō hoki ko Ngāti Maniapoto, Ngāti Tuwharetoa me Ngāti Rākaua Te Autonga. Kia ora, Irene Kiri Amaroyo is my name and I was co-pro principal investigator with Maru on the project. Um, I worked for a number of organisations in the research sector, I think I uh, was at Unitech Ngāwai Atetu Māori Indigenous Research Centre when we first started the project and I'm working on a MB project on um, 
climate change, resilient horticulture with the Waikato University uh, and I'm the chair of the Māori uh, Governance Group on that, on that project, six year project um, with Sandy Morrison, Dr Philip Wilcox uh, and representatives of the Māori horticultural organisations. Um, one of the things that we, uh, and I've been a researcher for um, a number of years, uh, one of the things that we um, dis discover quite early in this project as with a, uh, uh, one other science challenge project that I'm closing up on um, and a health research council project or oh, in a Waitangi tribunal project is where do you start your story or introduce your story about traditional Māori values and principles? Where do you bring that into your your research project? Even if, say for this one, you've got quite a contemporary sort of question to answer. So the question, and just in case people hadn't caught that from Maru's corridor, the question that ICP wanted to ask was, what are the traditional Māori fisheries values that we should be upholding or that we should be recognising? Where do we get that mātauranga from? And then maybe at a later project, can we think about how do we integrate that into our commercial business practice? So if you didn't catch that, that oh sorry, that was three questions, but that was the question we were looking to answer. <coughs> um, and fortunately, I think what's kind of saved our no, no, in this research project is that the mātauranga was so rich we stayed there. And so in answer to your question, Kare, around what would ICP kind of try to do to look at solutions or, or altering practices, not there yet. Not there yet because the mātauranga asked us to stay a bit longer. Uh, and also as researchers we were asking ourselves, in terms of a whole set of teeth, which I currently don't have, um, which are the pieces that are gaps which are missing, which need fixing in terms of our mātauranga? Um, just in case for the non-Māori in the, in the room, uh, and the non kopapa Māori methodology researchers in the room, um, it's not about buying, you know, um, uh, new crowns or flying to Thailand for a new top set or like me fixing my two front teeth that I had when I was 12 years old on the back of my sister's head as we were skiing down to Apehu. Um, it's more about is your whole set of teeth your originals or is your whole set of teeth yours that you had when you were a baby and now in, in your 60s you still have intact. Um, people like Dr Charles Royal uh, would say there is a paucity at best, a paucity at best of mātauranga Māori remaining available to us. And so when we do projects like this, we need to <coughs> honour that part. That's what the decolonisation aspect was about. And I think probably I'm talking to three quarters of the room who already know this, but know that in this project we acknowledged that in our process of how we treated having mātanga, you know, Māori experts and us as researchers picking apart the bits or the teeth that we didn't want in the whole kōrero. So questions we answered were, what is it that we should not do to their interview responses for the science challenge? One of the things we decided early was that the science challenge were not going to take our early findings or any comms releases and just kind of land them on a piece of, pe piece of paper and put a diagram on it and say, here's the ICP's research project. We want to wait till the end. We want to wait till we've finished writing. We want to wait until we've got a full set of teeth so that our kōrero can come out tika. So we called our project Kia Tika Tehi Ika and we used decolonising research methodologies from the beginning. 
which meant that Maru and I weren't going to translate because we're non Māori or natural speakers, weren't going to translate what we thought we heard the speakers say. So we used mātanga uh, Māori experts even to help us understand, not translate, but understand what had been said. So just to name drop, sorry, and then I'll leave it there, just to name drop, we asked Edueda Morgan if he would do the interviews. Then we asked uh, a woman by the name of Tawi Rangihau, who is John Rangihau's, one of John Rangihau's older daughters, to provide us researchers with a translation. We then asked her younger sister Kararaina Rangihau to facilitate the first workshop after we had disseminated all those interviews amongst the ICP members to explain to us how she would have provided findings and analysis, which gave us, they gifted us the tikanga analysis framework of Sir John Nangiho, which is te kauwairunga and te kauwairaro. So two, two jaws together, two jaws together. Kauai is a chin. Kauairunga is the upper house kōrero, spiritual, whatever you want to name it. The kauairaro is us. So they described it as what happens inside the whare is kauairaro. What happens outside is Western science, Western culture. And so we have to, in this kōrero, find that, right, so that it can speak. Sorry. Hey, um, oh, sorry. hey Whanau, um Look, I think I think we've got the next presentation up. So um, I'm just going to actually cut it there. Um, but. Hey, happy to have a cup of coffee. Um, got some, had a piece from our research, uh, which we are in talking about. Where do we start? And we, we've actually started from Hawaii and brought that through into uh, we right up to where we are uh, today. Um, we do intend to to carry on with this project. So this is really just a, a toe dip in the water. I, th I thought when I first went into this, I thought we were going to answer all the world's problems. Um, I realised, oh, OK, no. Um, back, back a slide? Yeah, so um, uh, Tikanga Assessment Framework. Um, so this is, as, as Irene said, this is the research piece. Um, you know, we work through when it comes to, say, bottom trawling. Actually, if we were to stop bottom trawling overnight, um, what's what's the impact on the business? So then, what are the options? If it's if it's severe, what are our options? Uh, what are we actually going to do? Uh, and then, how do we build a brand around our changes that we've made? One example, right? For the last ten years, we've never fished our eel um, quota, our tuna. Even though um, the Ministry of Fisheries says uh, Fisheries New Zealand says, yeah, it's fine, you're allowed to. Uh, that's so we've left. Um, 500, half a million dollars on the table. That's just one example of where we have actually taken action. We do a lot of those things. How do we actually tell that story and build that into our brand going forward? That's that's the last piece that we're gonna that we're gonna do. Um, so that's us. As I said, look, love to have a cup of coffee. Um, I don't want to tune to our next uh, presenter's time. So, kia ora tato. Thank you, Irene. Uh, Gria is another person involved in our research project. Korea, um, have a chat later on. Kia ora tato. Thank you. Yeah.